All right, in this video, we are going to be discussing part two. And in this part, we'll be looking at how to calculate equilibrium constants and the reaction quotient. So, to start this, we will be looking at how to calculate equilibrium constants. Now, in part one, we talked about the equilibrium expression and how you write the expression where you have K is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. And they, these were to the power of X and Y, where X and Y were the coefficients for uh, the balanced equation. So uh, we looked at the Haber processes where we have hydrogen gas and nitrogen gas reacting together to form ammonia. So we're going to continue with this reaction. It's a very famous reaction. It's something that's easy to work with. And so to do this, uh, what we need are some concentrations. So uh, this is just a very simple calculation that you go through and in solving for the equilibrium constant. To do this, again, we're going to need first the initial concentrations and or the equilibrium concentrations. And now I say that because I'm saying initial versus equilibrium. So anytime you're given a problem, and specifically an equilibrium problem, we could either be given the initial or we could be given the equilibrium. Now, since we're calculating the equilibrium constant, we need to have the equilibrium concentrations. If we were given the initial concentrations, we could not determine the equilibrium constant because we do not know the equilibrium concentrations. So this is one of those problems where you have to know the equilibrium concentration before you can calculate the constant itself. So in this example, let's say that we have uh, the concentration of nitrogen, concentration of hydrogen, and the concentration of ammonia. And all of these are at equilibrium. And so let's say that the concentration of nitrogen was 0.1 molar, hydrogen was 0.2 molar, and then ammonia was 0.4 molar. So we'd go about calculating the constant. Now before we do that, we have to write the equilibrium expression. And so we always set up the products of the reactants. And then we, we put in the, the concentrations into the expression. So So you have to be real careful when calculating this. So if you're using your calculator, you need to make sure that you do use parentheses on the top and the bottom that way everything is separated out and it just makes things a little bit easier to work with and you don't make any silly mistakes so that's what i'm working on right now is inputting this so i go through i calculate the equilibrium constant and i get an equilibrium constant of 200 for this so if you do this correctly by inputting, you know, the top and then the bottom. Now in the calculator, make sure that you have this in parentheses. So I have 0 0.4. This is how I have it wrote in the calculator. Squared divided by parentheses 0 0.1 times 0 0.2 rooftop 3 and close the parentheses out. So if you have it input it in your calculator like that, you end up with 200, all right? So it's just simply basically taking the calculator, making sure that you know that you have your equilibrium concentrations, and then writing the equilibrium expression correctly, making sure you have products of reactants, and then going through the process of the mathematical part in the calculator. So you keep those straight, that part will be a lot easier to, to manage. 
So let's look at another example. So let's say we have uh, HCl forming an equilibrium. It's a decomposition reaction where it breaks down to H2 and Cl2. So uh, the, the concentrations for these at equilibrium are going to be all 0.1 molar. Lot, the information will be stated as equilibrium concentrations. If it is not stated equilibrium, then it's going to be initial and that will be a different problem that you have to work on. So to do this problem here, what we have to do is we have to uh, again write the equilibrium expression divided by HCl here, squared, and then we put in the, the values. So this is going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1 squared. So again, go in your calculator and you're going to get one for this value. So this is one of those examples where you get one and that's just because all the concentrations are equal to each other. So pretty neat, right? So that means that this reaction is not favored nor towards the reactants nor the products. It's, it's perfect where it sits. If we look back at this example here, the equilibrium constant was 200. That was greater than one. That means that the products are more favored. So the equilibrium is going to lie to the right of, of the equilibrium that you see here. So it would be on this side more favored to be on that side. This one here, neither side is favored. So uh, the main thing that you got to understand here is two things. Know the equilibrium concentrations and write the equilibrium expression and make sure you input those concentrations correctly. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the reaction quotient because not always are you going to be given the equilibrium concentrations. And when you're given the initial concentrations, you have to have an idea of how to go about solving for the, the direction of change. And that's where we're going to get into really involved in, in part three is calculating equilibrium concentrations using that directional change. So the reaction quotient is, is what that's for. So, so to determine the change that will take place we use Q to determine the direction of change and Q is your reaction quotient Alright, now, so again, we must be given the initial concentrations of all species. If you're not, then that, that makes it a different problem. So. So we're going to look at the Haber process again, where we have nitrogen plus hydrogen is in equilibrium with ammonia. And in this problem, we're going to give you the concentrations of these initially. So this is going to be 5 molar. The concentration of hydrogen will be 5 molar. And then the concentration of ammonia initially will be 5 molar. So all we do is instead of using K, we use Q. Q is also working with the expression. It's That part isn't changing 
The only check is just the, the symbol that we use. And again, Q just helps to determine the direction of change here. And so all we do now is plug this in and solve for it. And then we're going to compare this back to our original to figure out the change. So Q here is going to be equal to 0 0.04. Now we want to compare Q to K. This is really what's going to determine the, the change that we're going to observe. So is Q, now remember K we just determined was equal to 200. So is Q equal to K? No. Is Q greater than K? No. Q is less than K. So we're, what we're looking at now is a fact of since Q is less than K, that means the reactants are higher and so the equilibrium is going to shift towards the products so so we're just writing this down here Q if Q is less than K that means the reactants I'm going to abbreviate this are greater than the concentration of the products that means they shift towards the products will be observed. Now if Q is greater than K, the concentration of the reactants are going to be less than the concentration of the products, you're going to have the opposite effect. It's going to shift towards the reactants. Now if Q was equal to K, that means the reactants is going to be equal to the concentration of the products and no change will be observed. Now all this ties into what we look at and what we call this as an ice chart. Okay, So that's where we're going to be looking at now is we're going to be looking at what is called the ice chart. An ice chart is really simply put a way of just, a, it, it's a setup establishing the direction of change and what's going to happen at equilibrium here. So ice, I stands for initial, C stands for change, and then E represents equilibrium. So the initial for all these are five. The change, well, we're seeing a shift towards the products. That means the products are going to go up and the reactants are going to go down. So this is where that change comes into play. That's why we solve for Q. So the change is going to be related also to the stoichiometry of the equation. So this is 1x, this is 3x, and this is 2x. That comes from, this, from the coefficients. Now equilibrium is just putting the I and C together. And so we get this form here. And so now what we would do is we would take this information, we would plug it back into the expression, and then we would solve for x and then establish what the equilibrium concentrations are for the individual species. That's in part three. And so we'll be looking at how we determine the equilibrium concentrations using this ice chart. So that concludes the part two video for, for this section. And so like I said, we'll, we'll continue this conversation of how to calculate equilibrium concentrations using the ice chart in part three. Thanks for watching.